divers defection, summer love, and the Montreal Olympics. So let's get right to it. In July of 1976, at the Montreal Olympic Games, 17-year-old Russian diver Sergei Nemtsinov finished ninth in the men's 10-meter platform diving competition. It was then he made the gut-wrenching decision to defect from the Soviet Union. His Soviet coaches, wary of defectors amongst their athletes now that the diving competition was over, had restricted the entire team to their rooms in the Montreal Olympic Village. The divers would fly out as soon as possible and not stay the remainder of the games or participate in the closing ceremonies. Sergei realized if he wanted freedom, it was now or never. So he quietly approached the Canadian diving team for help. The Montreal Olympic Games was an Olympics to remember, with the likes of Romania's Nadia Comaneci, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Bruce Jenner all winning gold medals. Tensions were high, though, as the terrible murder of 11 Israeli athletes at the Munich Games in 1972 was still fresh on everyone's minds. Another young diver, a 16-year-old American named Greg Luganis, had made a name for himself by winning silver. Scott Crenham, a diver from the Canadian team, enlisted Luganis to help get the Soviet team out of their rooms and into the cafeteria for a going-away luncheon. In the midst of emotional hugs and goodbyes to new Olympic friendships, Sergei and Scott Crena silently slipped away. They ran down a hall, down a flight of stairs, and into the Canadian office where athletes could seek asylum. There, the exhilarated yet frightened boy declared in broken English, I wish to defect to Canada. He wanted to be free of communism, free to travel, free to live as he wished, free to love who he chooses. With wavy blonde hair, teenage good looks, the affable young teenager instantly became a darling of the press and an embarrassment to the Soviets. The Canadian team helped them retain two local lawyers to obtain a visa extension and official entry into Canada. They secretly smuggled Sergei out of Montreal and into Toronto. He stayed on Lake Muskoka at the summer house of a sympathetic Toronto businessman named John Fleming. The Soviets launched an angry propaganda campaign, his coaches shouting that the United States and Canada are drugging and brainwashing Soviet athletes to defect. The Soviet consul declared that this was a simple kidnapping and his lawyers were criminals since all young Sergei truly wanted to do was return to his loving family in Mother Russia. Threats were made that all sporting relationships would be cut off between Canada and the USSR including their beloved hockey. Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau entered into the mix, stating that the decision to return or stay was up to the young boy alone. The Soviets were allowed one supervised opportunity to convince him to return. They claimed later to the press that Sergei was pale with vacant, dilated eyes, repeating the words, freedom, freedom, over and over again, like a programmed robot. Nothing could be farther than the truth. For here is where the wrinkle of romance entered into the equation. Sergei told his fellow athletes that he began falling in love with an American female diver named Carol Lindner. The complicating factor, she was the daughter of a wealthy family that owned the Cincinnati Enquirer and the Thriftway supermarket chain. Sergey and Carol had met earlier that year when he came to Fort Lauderdale for an international diving competition. They rekindled their relationship when they met again at the Montreal Olympic Pool, meeting for several discreet rendezvous. Carol's father released a stern statement saying that their relationship was strictly casual and they never discussed defection. At her father's insistence, Carol wrote Sergey a letter urging him not to stay due to any feelings he might have for her. His Soviet teammates were forced by their coaches to also send Sergei messages, reminding him of his aged and ailing grandmother in the USSR, who pleaded for Sergei to return. Separated from Carol, alone in Canada, what was the boy to do? What would you have done? Return to family or stay for love? 
I imagine it's much like the anxiety a diver must feel during competition. Balancing on the edge of the hard platform, 10 meters above glistening water, the blue pool beneath them, a thousand spectator eyes silently watching and judging them. In the end, after 19 nerve-wracking days in isolation, Sergei made the painful decision to return to Russia. He said goodbye to his new Canadian friends and his lawyers delivered him to the Royal Mounted Police, who then passed him back to his Soviet coaches in Montreal. To avoid the press, within hours, they put Sergei on an Aeroflot plane back to Moscow. Needless to say, Sergei received an icy reception back home. Only his youth and naivete allowed him to escape the brand of traitor. He was never allowed to compete outside the Soviet Union again. But he was allowed to compete again in the 1980 Moscow Olympics, the ones boycotted by the United States due to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. He won no medals at the Moscow Games, and it was to be his last Olympics. After the fall of the Soviet Union, over a decade later in 1991, Sergei finally emigrated to the United States with his Russian wife and children. It was in the US where his son too became a competitive collegiate diver. Today, Sergei Nemtsinov lives a quiet life with his family in Georgia as an American citizen. <laughs>